Hello? Okay, the light's on. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the City Council, to our Public Safety Committee. Uh, I am Council Member Vanessa Gibson of the 16th District, and I'm proud to serve as Chair of the Committee on Public Safety. I'd like to thank all of my colleagues and all of the members of the public for being here this afternoon as this committee votes on two important pieces of legislation. I'd like to recognize the members of the committee who are here with us, Council Member Vincent Gentili, Council Member Jimmy Vaca, Council Member Jamani Williams, Council Member Robert Cornegy, Council Member Haim Deutsch, Council Member Rafael Espinal, Council Member Rory Lansman, Council Member Richie Torres, and Minority Leader Steve Matteo. This afternoon, this committee is voting on proposed intro 182-D and proposed intro 541-C. These bills were first introduced as part of the Community Safety Act of 2012 and have undergone several changes since being reintroduced in 2014. Intro 182-D, which is sponsored by Council Member Richie Torres, would require police officers to identify themselves during certain police interactions, such as when an officer questions a person not in custody who is suspected of criminal activity during a home search or during a checkpoint stop. The other legislation, Intro 541-C, introduced by Council Member Antonio Reynoso, would require the department to create a policy and procedure for officers to gain voluntary consent prior to conducting a search and document the interaction. These bills are collectively known as the Right to Know Act. The versions of the bills the committee is voting on today represents several years, almost four years of negotiations and truly a compromise and represent an important effort to increase accountability as well as improve police community relationships. The Right to Know Act is certainly the city council's most publicized police reform effort, but it is certainly far from the only one. Over the past four years under our tenure of the speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, this committee and the city council have passed the Criminal Justice Reform Act which drastically reduced by 90% the number of criminal summons that are given for low-level and non-violent offenses. In addition, we amended the nuisance abatement law to make the outdated draconian law more fairer to all New Yorkers. We held safety summits in numerous sectors across all five boroughs, increased coordinated social services in high crime areas, created the first ever Office of Crime Victims Services, increased transparency relating to school safety and school discipline in our schools, and that's just to name a few. There's much, much more. This version of the Right to Know Act will be yet another tool that we can use to improve the relationships between our communities and the NYPD but it cannot and should not be our only tool. I hope I speak for all of my colleagues when I say that I look forward to continuing to work with all of the advocates and stakeholders as well as the NYPD and the administration to truly protect public safety and increase respect for every New Yorker. Finally, I want to highlight the work of the Legislative Division and the prime sponsors of both pieces of legislation who have truly undertaken an incredible amount of work to draft, compromise, negotiate, and finalize many versions of these bills to truly adopt a balanced approach, a delicate approach to achieving today's bills. It has been an honor to serve as your chair of the Public Safety Committee, and I remain fully committed to working with all of my colleagues and the administration to improve police community relationships in the new term. And with that, I want to acknowledge the staff who've worked really hard. Their labor of love has not gone unnoticed. Our senior legislative counsel who sits next to me, Deepa Ambakar, our legislative policy analyst, Casey Addison, our senior financial analyst, Steve Reister, our deputy chief of staff, Laura Polpa, my chief of staff, 
Dana Wax, and my Deputy Chief of Staff, Wendy Gallegos. Thank you for countless hours, not just on today's agenda, but certainly the past four years. To all of my colleagues on this committee, I hope and truly pray that we will continue to work together in the spirit of collaboration and partnership. It's been an honor to work with you. It's been even more of an honor to serve as the first woman and the first person of color to chair this committee. It is something that I have never taken lightly. I've recognized the great responsibility that I've carried on my shoulders each and every day, and many always remind me of that responsibility. And truly, our outgoing members, I want to recognize on this committee who are leaving us at the end of this month, Councilmember Julissa Ferreras Copeland of Queens, Councilmember Vincent Gentili of Brooklyn, and Councilmember Jimmy Vaca of the Bronx. Thank you, colleagues, for your public service to your districts and the city of New York. I look forward to whatever God has in store for you in public service in your next chapter. Thank you for your service, and we look forward to working with you in another chapter. May God bless you and keep you, and certainly on the season of the holidays, I wish each and every one of you, my colleagues and all the members of the public, an incredible and wonderful, happy holiday season. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, and I look forward to working with all of you in the new year. Thank you so much. And with that, I want to also call my colleagues' attention. In addition to the committee report you have in front of you, you also have from the Finance Division a fiscal impact statement on the cost of both Intro 182D and Intro 541C. I also want to acknowledge for the record that we've received testimony from Julia Carmel Salazar representing the Communities United for Police Reform. We've received that for the record. And as both bills have went through significant changes, if any of my colleagues on the committee have any questions, please let us know, and our senior legislative counsel, Deepa Ambakar, will be happy to answer any of those questions. And now I want to ask our prime sponsor of Intro 182D to please bring um, his statement forward, uh, Councilmember Richie Torres. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Uh, intro 182 is the most comprehensive police reform that the City Council has ever undertaken. Never before has the Council set standards of accountability and transparency aimed at improving the everyday street encounters between police and civilians. Intro 182, once enacted, will require every single officer to have a business card. The business cards will include the name, rank, shield number, and command of the officer. It will include the number to 311, where a civilian can go to express concerns, compliments, or complaints about the conduct of an officer. It will include the website where a civilian can go to request video footage of the street encounter. Every officer will be required to provide a business card upon request in every single interaction without exception. Every officer will be required to provide a business card proactively, regardless of request, in every level two, level three, and level four interaction. Level two interactions consist of investigatory questioning based on a suspicion of criminal activity. Level three interactions consist of stop, question, and frisk. Level four interactions consist of searches. These are the most intensive and intrusive interactions that have long been the subject of most civilian complaints. Asking for an ID card in the midst of an escalating encounter carries the risk of deepening tensions. The point of intro 81, 82 is to demand proactive identification as a means of de-escalating the very street encounters that do escalate. The moment a street encounter escalates to the level of accusatory questioning or escalates to the level of stop, question, or frisk, or escalates the level of a search, that encounter immediately becomes subject to a proactive identification requirement. The historical context here is critical. The Right to Know Act was originally part of the Community Safety Act, which emerged against the backdrop of stop and frisk policing. 
At the height of stop and frisk policing, there were 700,000 stops in New York City. If intro 182 had been the law back in 2011, every single one of those 700,000 stops would have been subject to the proactive ID requirement. By way of further illustration, compare intro 182 to the federal court decision in Floyd versus New York City. In Floyd, the federal court required the NYPD to provide tear-offs for level three encounters. By contrast, intro 182 will require the NYPD to provide pre-printed cards, which are more reliable than handwritten tear-offs, and it will require those pre-printed cards to be given not only at level three, but level two, level three, and level four interactions. Or compare intro 182 to the Community Safety Act. The Community Safety Act established an office, which is something that council does all the time. It created a private right of action in court, which is something the council does all the time. By contrast, intro 182 regulates the day-to-day -day street encounters between police and civilians, which is something the council has never done before. It is historic. It is unprecedented. It is real reform in the truest sense of the word. Or compare intro 182 to intro 541. Intro 541 only applies to consent searches, which makes up a narrow subset of enforcement actions. By contrast, intro 182 affects every single police-civilian interaction, and it has the greatest de-escalating effect on the very police-civilian interactions that do escalate. As the youngest elected official of color in New York City, I know firsthand what it is like to be confronted by an officer without knowing who is confronting me or why. And I know from my own lived experience, as well as from my own knowledge of three years of negotiations, that intro 182, once enacted, will bring greater transparency to the very street encounters that I experienced as an adolescent and as an adult. Now, there have been some controversy around these bills. There's been several MIPS circulating intro 182, and I want to address some of those myths. Myth number one, intro 182 is a backroom deal. This is a lie. Intro 182 and intro 541 were negotiated through the same process, by the same negotiators, in the same room. As far as I know, there was no special, secret, smoke-filled room in which intro 182 was uniquely negotiated. Myth number two, I am doing the bidding of the NYPD. This too is a lie. Intro 182 and intro 541 are both products of painstaking negotiations with the NYPD and it took three years to get the NYPD to begrudgingly accept these bills as part of a hard fought compromise. Myth number three, I am doing the bidding of the Police Benevolent Association. Now, I will confess that I've been caught red-handed. And for evidence, I would direct you to look no further than the supportive words of Patrick Lynch. Quote, it is almost unthinkable in our current environment that we would discourage police officers from proactively addressing the threats of crime and terrorism. But that is precisely what the right to know bills would accomplish, he said, calling them harmful pieces of legislation that present a dangerous distraction from the very real threats to our city. Now, these are clearly the words of a glowing endorsement, clearly the words of a man who is grateful to me for allegedly doing his bidding. And myth number four, intro 182 guts protections. Uh, this is the single biggest lie of them all. Local law presently offers no protections for accountability or transparency in police-civilian interactions. Common sense dictates that you cannot gut protections that do not exist. Intro 182 creates new protections that will have the force and staying power of law. And I want to address concerns about traffic stops. And I, I will make two points. As I 
noted before, the Right to Know Act was originally part of the Community Safety Act, which was developed against the backdrop of stop and frisk policing. Stop and frisk policing is fundamentally about street encounters, not traffic stops. And second, the concern was the council has been going in the direction of reducing contact with the criminal justice system, reducing the number of arrests, reducing the number of summonses. The mayor's office, the NYPD, the speaker's office had concerns that if we had included traffic stops in the legislation, the PBA would have directed their officers to issue summonses rather than informal warnings. And so I had to make a decision about whether I was going to derail an entire compromise over something that could have the unintended consequence of generating hundreds of thousands of summonses in the city of New York. And I concluded that a compromise that regulates day-to-day -day interactions between police and civilians to an extent we've never seen before was a strong foundation that we could build on in the future. Um, I want to thank all my colleagues who have stood with me. I want to give particular gratitude to Councilmember Johnson, who actually defended me in a hearing. A and my colleagues who do defend me do so not out of tribalism, but out of trust. Those who know me know that I'm a public servant who cares deeply about the substance of what I do. And I would not be moving forward with this compromise unless I was, if I, if I was not absolutely certain that the substance of what we have negotiated was fundamentally strong and represents a historic and bona fide breakthrough for police civilian interactions. Uh, with that said, that's the extent of my comments. Thank you very much, Council Member Torres. And with that, as I mentioned earlier, if any of my colleagues on the committee have any questions about the fiscal impact or the contents of either pieces of legislation, please reach out and let us know so you can speak with Deepa Ambakar as well as Steve Reister. And with that, we are going to begin, and I'm going to have our committee clerk, William Martin, call the roll. Thank you once again for joining us, colleagues. William Martin, yeah. committee clerk, roll call vote, Committee on Public Safety. Items are coupled. Chair Gibson. Pass. Matteo. Madam Chair, may I explain my vote? Yes, you may. Thank you. Um, I'll be voting no today because at best these bills are an unprecedented intrusion into the NYPD's ability to set its own patrol guidelines. At worst, they will handcuff our officers' efforts to prevent and solve crime and can have a further chilling effect on policing in the city. While I appreciate that the most recent versions of these bills are the result of a compromise between my council colleagues and the administration, I cannot vote for legislation that will compromise law enforcement's ability to do its job and potentially threaten the safe streets that so many res residents and businesses call home. With that said, I'm voting no and all. Gentilly. Madam Chair, may I ex be excused to explain my vote? Yes, you may. First of all, let me thank you, Madam Chair, for your leadership over the, uh, this term, and certainly it's been a pleasure to serve with you on this, on this committee. Let me just say that I have uh, full confidence in my colleague uh, Richie Torres' ability to, um, to negotiate um, this uh, final version of this bill and his ability to uh, put something on the floor that not only uh, is, is acceptable and good in his terms, in the terms of what he set out to do, but also... Um, in the eyes of the New York City Police Department, that this is something that they uh, have agreed uh, is, is a way to move forward. And uh, I congratulate uh, Councilman Torres uh, for his persistence, his perseverance, and for his ability to get us to this point. And with that, I vote aye. Ferreris Copeland. I vote aye. Williams. Pass. Carnegie. I vote aye. Deutsch. No. Espinal. I vote aye. Lanceman. Uh, let me just say, uh, this is a tough committee, Madam Chairwoman, and you have put your heart and soul into it these last few years, and I want to commend you. For, uh, for your effort and the way that you've conducted yourself. With that, I vote aye. Torres. 
Well, Vanessa, it's an honor to have you not only as a colleague in the Bronx delegation, but as chair of the Public Safety Committee. As, as I've learned this past week, uh, tackling police reform is a thankless <laughs> task at times, but I'd probably vote aye. Rebecca. I commend the chair, of course, Vanessa Gibson, for her service. Um, I also commend Councilman Torres for his hard work. However, I vote no on both bills. Williams. May I excuse me my vote? Yes. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, first off, uh, let me say I, I, I just want to make mention of the hard work that both uh, Councilmember Torres and Councilmember Reynoso uh, put into these bills. I have a, um, in my eight years uh, been in disagreement with many of my colleagues. They've been in disagreement with me. Uh, we've never resorted to personal attacks, so I will not do so now. I know how much work it goes into put a bill like this. Um, I won't respond to the uh, diminished words of the Community Safety Act. I think everyone knows the Herculean effort that it took to get that passed in the time that they were in. Uh, I will say that uh, this was part of the Community Safety Act. At that time, we made a calculation because uh, we couldn't get, uh, we couldn't cross the threshold that we wanted to cross. We would uh, pass two of the bills and let the other two go. I'm glad that I was able to give a, a young upstart an opportunity uh, to show the leadership on, on this particular bill. Uh, just for me to clear up some miscommunications, the first one is somehow that this bill, uh, 182, is being opposed because the advocates and folks can't get 100%. That is completely um, uh, not the right, mis is a complete mischaracterization. None of the bills are 100% of what the advocates want. But in the negotiation, there is a threshold with which folks believe there is a diminished return if you move forward uh, not getting a certain amount, and I believe uh, that that threshold is here at uh, with 182. Uh, for clarity, I have disagreed with advocates on a number of bills. Intro 119D uh, that was recently passed. It was passed without uh, the uh, acceptance of the advocates. But as I, ex I explained uh, why I'm doing it, and uh, the mutual respect remained. This bill was often talked about moving the ball forward. I would say and add, even if you took out level two stops, it would move the ball forward. We have to always talk about the, move, the ball being moved forward in context of what has been put in political capital-wise and a discussion that has to be had after. I believe a false celebration with this bill will make it harder to have continued conversations uh, that are needed going forward. Uh, Almost all advocates who are in this bill, including uh, Communities United Police Reform, NAACP, the National Action Network, the families, some of which are in this room now who have lost loved ones, are all opposed to this bill, not because Richie has not put a lot of effort in here, not because uh, there's nothing good in the bill because it has merit, because the calculations of all those folks are that it will make the conversation harder. And I wish that was put in uh, to its proper context. The second one was uh, this uh, notion somehow that folks are ceding to advocates or as one person put it, abdicating the responsibility to advocates. Uh, that again is not true and I find it ironic that that is made about this one bill while using advocates to try to shepherd through another bill that's also very controversial, controversial at the same time. Uh, this conversation is something uh, people often look to, to my voice to help push forward. Uh, I stayed out of it as the negotiations were going forward and then was presented with something that I was forced to comment on. I assume in the next term I still will have a voice and, and others who uh, were opposed to it. We know how difficult it would be. It is, uh, should be pointed out, the only people who are supporting this bill primarily uh, are the people who bottled it up for the last four years or the people who made an ill-conceived agreement uh, a few years ago. Everyone else is opposed to it, including the people who asked them not to make the agreement. And all they are saying is that don't come to us with a zero-sum ultimatum on the absolute last time that we can make a decision, and let's have uh, a better discussion going forward. I might add the uh, opposition includes black and Latino uh, law enforcement organizations who are routinely with us as we make these decisions. So. With that said, and a, a heartfelt acknowledgement of the work that was put in by both of my colleagues, I'm voting aye on, which is that, is it 541? 541. 541, and I'm voting no on 182.
Chair Gibson. Thank you very much to all of my colleagues who are here and have served on this committee for the past four years. Once again, it's truly been an honor to work with you, and I appreciate the confidence that you have given to me to lead this committee, to have very important yet delicate conversations about policing in the city of New York, and obviously what happens on a national level and how that impacts everyday New Yorkers. Uh, this committee has done a tremendous amount of work, and we've worked under limited circumstances where we've had to navigate a process, look at innovative and creative approaches in terms of legislation, not just talk the talk, but walk the walk in terms of what we've done in the crisis management system, what we've done with anti-gun violence advocates, and certainly working with New Yorkers and families who are impacted by police abuses each and every day. And so I want to join my colleagues in acknowledging the work that has been done to get us here today. It has not been easy. Maybe we make it look too good, but it has not been easy. And I want to thank Councilmember Reynoso and Councilmember Torres for their leadership, critical leadership. As legislators, we are tasked with making decisions every single day both here at City Hall as well as in our districts. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we don't compromise our values, our principles, and the fundamental rights that we believe every New Yorker should be afforded. In the climate that we are working in with a national government that does not support our sanctuary status as a city, we have to fight like never before for the basic protections that New Yorkers should rightfully receive. And so these bills come to this committee at a very important time when we've made significant progress working with the NYPD and working with all of our stakeholders. And at the end of the day, we will move forward and we will still work together for the betterment of every New Yorker. None of the legislation that we have advanced in this committee the world has not fallen apart. The sky has not fallen apart. But rather, we have had really important conversations that really serve to invest in our city and make a difference. So while I understand all of the concerns, the phone calls, the emails, the tweets, every level of communication that we have been afforded to receive three years ago, last year, this year, this entire weekend, we've been flooded with phone calls, and I really appreciate all of the advocacy. I hope that moving forward after these bills, we still continue to have these very important conversations. We have New Yorkers that are living with emotional disturbances. We have EDP calls all the time that NYPD is responding to, and that is an issue that we need to take up in the next session. And so with that, I want to thank Councilmember Reynoso and thank Councilmember Torres, all of the civil rights group, the defense attorneys, the civil legal services organizations, the families impacted by these measures, and every single advocate. We have heard you. At the end of the day, we have a process, and we are going to move forward. I do hope these con conversations do continue in the new year, and I'm looking forward to working with all of my colleagues. And with that... I want, okay, sure. And with that, I am voting aye on both with my congratulations to both sponsors and my firm commitment moving forward to continue conversations on building relationships with the NYPD across our city. Thank you very much. Councilmember Torres. Yeah, I just want to respond to Councilmember Williams, and I just want to, I respect whatever differences of opinion we have. I have immense respect for you as a public servant, and you know that, and look forward to continuing our friendship for the next four years. And you're right, conversations about policing, about race, are hard, are always going to remain hard, because that's the nature of American life. And we all have our thresholds. And you might remember, about a year and a half ago, I came out against the Speaker's Administrative Agreement, because it did, meet, it did not meet one of my thresholds, which was especially level two interactions. And I was forcefully critical. And there were many who said at the time that that agreement would foreclose the possibility of progress. The fact that we're moving forward today, I think, thoroughly disproves that argument. I think we 
in the advocacy community just have to continue advocating and agitating to move the ball further and further and further and never relent. You know, in my mind, progress is a floor, not a ceiling. It's a, a precedent. We're setting a precedent on something we've never done before, and we should build on it in the years to come. No one should pretend that this legislation is going to fundamentally shift the paradigm in policing. Right? No one should pretend that this legislation is going to solve institutionalized racism, either in policing or elsewhere in American life. But does it move the ball forward? I believe it does, and I believe we should continue that struggle in the years to come. So. Thank you very much to all of my colleagues. A vote of seven in the affirmative, four in the negative, and no abstentions. Introduction 182D has been adopted by the committee. And by eight in the affirmative, three in the negative, and no abstentions. Introduction 541C is also adopted by the committee. All right. Great. All right. Thank you, colleagues, for joining us once again. And to each and every one of you, have a wonderful, happy holidays. And thank you so much for joining us today. Good luck to all of my colleagues who are leaving us at the end of the month. God bless you all. This last hearing of the Committee on Public Safety for the year 2017 is hereby adjourned. Yes. Sorry if I sound excited. <laughs>